Thomas from Bricks here. In today's video, we are going to have a look at the brand new Bricks 134, which contains an equal amount of new features, improvements, and bug fixes. I think in total, we have 32 items here, but as always with this sort of release video, we are only going to focus on the main new features, namely the new asset loading optimization, then we're going to have a look at the structure panel auto sync, the sticky panel tabs, and the web font loading method to avoid the flash of unstyled text when you use a custom font or Google font on your website. All right, let's get started here with the asset loading optimization. I prepared a little table here, a bit nicer looking here with bricks. And the issue we faced prior to Bricks 1, 3, 4 was the total file size of our CSS and JavaScript files. You can see here previously, this added up to a total of 647 kilobyte. And especially for visitors with a slow data connection, um, obviously took quite a while for your page to load. Now, after this asset loading optimization has been completed and you enable this CSS loading method for external files, which I'm gonna show you in a minute how you can do this, we can bring down the total file size here to 79 kilobytes. So that is a 88% or smaller file size. And even without this setting here enabled, you would bring your assets down 61%, but this is really the value that we're trying to go for here. And in order to accomplish those values, what you have to do, you need to enable this first in your WordPress dashboard. So if you go to brick settings and then on the performance, you can see here, we have this new CSS loading method option. So by default, it's selected um, to use inline styles, which again, um, also gives us pretty decent value here. Um, we only require 251 kilobyte. But if you wanna bring this one down to 79, you need to make sure that you set this one to external files. And once you actually click save settings, what's going to happen is that bricks in the background will generate various CSS files for different assets. For example, your global custom CSS is gonna be a file, your color palettes, your theme styles, and then also all of your bricks data so your posts your pages and your templates that you've created with bricks will be generated inside of your wordpress uploads folder if you see any error message here it's going to be because the uploads folder doesn't have sufficient file permissions that's something that you need to fix on your end but most likely there shouldn't be any issue here so if i click save setting now you can see um, it's now changed to external files and i can also see this regenerate css files button here, which we can also use uh, for some reason, maybe you use caching and it's not, your changes are not properly reflected on the front end after changing this setting here, you can always just regenerate all of those CSS files. Let me just quickly do this here. So you can also see what is going to be generated. And my case, I have a pretty fresh installation. So I only have a total of 10 CSS files, the color palette, like I said before, I have global elements. So I have a file for that. For my theme styles, I only have this one theme style here. So this is this file. And then for my post pages and templates, this is basically the post ID here. And the prefix is always going to be post. And then the number right here. And I'm gonna show you some results here that I achieved with a very um, simple site that I created. So you can see here, this doesn't contain any assets really, no images, nothing, it's just a heading here. Um, those, are, those are the results we get. It's, those are the web vitals here, the GD metrics go great. And if we scroll down, we can see our file sizes. So this is, um, all of the assets here that's being loaded on this page. The biggest one now being actually jQuery with um, 30 kilobyte, and this is after server compression. So if you don't use any sort of compression like um, gzip on your server, this value is actually going to be 90 kilobyte. And something that I actually didn't really mention in the asset optimization is we've already laid a lot of the groundwork now for removing jQuery. So I think we just have one 
JavaScript library left, which is the uh, countdown element, which is using a library that depends on jQuery. Once we also replace that one, we could, in theory, trying to bring the remove jQuery feature to Bricks as well. But that's a topic for another day. Then we can also get rid of this asset here altogether. Um, the bricks dot min dot js file you can see here total file size uncompressed 37 kilobyte which we also saw on the table previously and because i'm using compression here on my server it's actually only going to load 10 kilobytes and then we have this front end light dot min dot css file which brings us to another 8 kilobyte compressed or 42 kilobyte uncompressed so you can see here if you use server side compression those the total size here is actually just 18 kilobyte and it's everything that's going to be loaded if you use for example um, css animations um, depending on, on what is requested on your page it's going to load some additional resources but um, at the, the bare minimum it's going to load those two files here i think i also got some results here where I'm testing this really a simple page here just with a title you can see performance accessibility best practices and SEO everything is looking good here and I think I also tested this on web.dev so I also got those values here with my external file setting enabled this is still an experimental feature so for some reason something isn't working as expected when selecting this one just switch back to um, inline styles for the time being, but make sure to report this sort of bug, whatever you face. Maybe it's an incompatibility with your caching plugin. Just make sure to send us an email to help at bricksbuilder.io. All right, that's the first feature. I also don't really want to dwell more on this one now. Let's go straight to the next one here which is the structure panel auto sync and i also prepared a page here where you can see what is happening now and this also should help your workflow going forward so i've just inserted a really um, simple template here from the community templates library i didn't import any of the images that's why you can see this placeholder here in the background and by default if we can see here on the right hand side our structure we've got a lot of containers with um, child containers which contain different elements and you can see here if i scroll down actually got quite a lot of elements on this page i think this is going to be a good example now if i go inside of my structure here down and i click on this icon box it also automatically scrolls the canvas down to this icon box so i can see what i'm editing here as well what did not work previously was the same sync um, the other way around. When you change, uh, when you click on another active element, let's say I wanna edit my header now, I click here, I'm editing it, but the change is not really reflected in the structure. So in order for me to find this element, I would actually need to scroll manually up in the structure panel. And now I can see here that I'm editing this heading because now it has a different background color. If you want to enable this sync, that the structure panel also automatically scrolls to the active element, then you can enable this here in the settings. We've made this an additional settings under the builder tab because maybe that's not something actually that every user wants to use. If you want to use that feature, you need to make sure to enable the setting here. Structure panel auto sync, click on save. And then I'm going to reload my builder and I'm going to show you what's happening now. So you can see here, same page. And now I go down here and let's just say I want to edit this icon box. So I click here and you can now see the structure panel automatically scrolls to the element that I'm editing here. And you can see now it's centered in the structure panel. Now this also works when you have collapsed everything here. So let's say I collapse my entire structure so I can only see my root containers here. And let's say I wanna now edit this heading here. So I click here and you can now see that it opens the parent container. In this case, I only have this root container here. Let's just maybe select another example where I have multiple parent containers. Let's just click here. 
And now you can see that it opens for this text element, it opens this container here and also the root container. So that should also help you uh, just to be a bit more aware and to quickly change your editing flow. Okay, the next feature I wanna show you is the sticky uh, panel tabs. Uh, again, another time saver here. Let's close this and what I'm talking about are those two tabs up here. So we have the content tab and the style tab. And oftentimes, especially when you work in the style tab, let's just say I'm inside of the layout controls group and then I scroll down here. Um, previously, you can see now that this is sticky. So as soon as I it hits the top here of the panel, it starts scrolling down as I scroll down inside of my panel here. And if you want to just go up quickly inside of the style tab, you can just click this button and it just automatically scrolls you right up. So you avoid a lot of like to having to scroll up manually all the way. And of course you can also quickly switch to the content tab from here without having to scroll up and then click it. You can just click here and brings you straight to the content tab. And the last feature I want to show you is this also this new brick setting the web font loading method. And the setting is located under performance as well. If we scroll down here, you can see web font loading method. By default, actually, I already enabled this one. Let me switch back to uh, the uh, style sheet default. So let me save that one. And what is happening by default when you have a Google font on your page, like in my case here, this is a Google font, all of my headings. So this is a Google font. This is one, this is one, and this is one as well. First time someone is visiting a website, those assets here, in this case, the font files, they need to be downloaded from when it's a custom font from your server or when you're working with a Google font then from the Google server itself. And this takes some time, which is why you have this flash of unstyled text initially. So by default, you will see a web save font and then as soon as the custom font or the google font has been downloaded you will see it will be replaced by this google font here so if i reload my page initially you, you will see this web save font being loaded so i'm going to refresh sorry i need to disable my caching here so let me just open the development tools. Maybe I can also enable some throttling so we can see this a little bit better. Okay, let me reload. And you can see here initially we have this web save font. As soon as it's loaded, it switches to my Google font. And this effect oftentimes is not really desired. So what you can do, you can go to the settings here and you can enable this web font load. And what this one is doing it's initially not showing any content on your site. So you're just gonna see a white page. And as soon as all of the web fonts have been downloaded, so either a custom font or a Google font, it's gonna display all of your content at once. And you will not have like this text, um, this font replacement visible on your website. So if I'm gonna reload now, you will see Everything is white. And now that the font has been downloaded, it's just gonna pop up my entire content. And you will see initially my Google font has been loaded without having this flash of unstyled text by the web save font on the initial page load. Um, this feature actually we're going to build up on. There's another feature request on the idea board about a preload or a loader element that maybe when you use this sort of web font loader feature here, instead of just showing a white page, we'll probably implement some sort of preloader up here. So you can see the progress, uh, your visitors can see the progress of the website being loaded. So either with just having this horizontal bar here at the top filling up, or maybe we will implement some sort of percentage counter here centered on the page so the user can see the progress of the website being loaded. But this hasn't been implemented yet. Um, if you prefer to just um, stick with this flash of unstyled text for the moment, you can always just leave the default setting here to style sheets.
All right, and that's actually everything I wanted to show you here for this release. There are obviously a lot of more features. If you're curious about a specific one, you can always just click on it and you will have a description below the title of the feature request with more information. Um, quick shout out I want to give to Daniel here. He translated, where is it? Bricks into a Swedish. So thank you very much. It's very much appreciated your work and helping us um, translate Bricks into as many languages as possible. Also, we've updated um, the German translation. The Google Fonts library is up to date with the latest Google Fonts. And we also updated Vue.js, which is the JavaScript framework that we use inside of the builder plus all of the other dependencies, all of the other packages we use to uh, run inside the builder. So if you encounter any problems like inside of the builder functionality wise, or also in terms of the asset loading, please make sure to send us an email at help at rigsbuilder.io. All right, thank you so much for watching and happy testing.